this information and help out my students and friends and anyone else that can get use of this. We are going to talk briefly about integers. Integers are whole numbers and their opposites. Now, they also do include zero, okay? So the way I used to always do it is dot, 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 negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. Goes on forever in both directions. Okay, um, we're gonna talk about adding, subtracting, multiplication, and division with positive and negative numbers. But you already know how to do them with just positive, but we're gonna throw the negatives in there, all right? But before dealing with negatives, Let's look at some quotes, shall we? Oops. Everything negative, pressure challenges, is all an opportunity for me to rise. Okay? That's a great one. Opportunity for me to rise. Negative stuff is going to happen. How you react to it usually helps factor in what's going to become of it. Okay? Let's look at another one. Kobe Bryant. Oops. Okay. Always turn a negative situation into a positive situation. Not sometimes, always. You have to make it have it, but the verb turn, who's going to turn? You. It's up to you to deal with that negative situation and try to make it a positive one. Okay, Michael Jordan. And one more, famous person in the business world, positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will, okay? Well, who's doing the thinking? You are. So that's all up to you guys. Um, let's reiterate that. For me to rise... I turn a negative situation and my positive thinking. Okay? All right. Well, now let's get involved with negative numbers and see what we can do here. First of all, interestingly enough, we had to develop a teacher home workroom to do this distance learning. Teacher tech, I spent a whole day emptying and cleaning out a guest room of ours and put it a number of things so that we could do business in here, the business of education, two teacher desks. Uh, of course, Mrs. Douglas is an English teacher, both at the same school. We love and miss all our students. So we got two teacher desks, two laptops, um, iPads, printer, Apple TV, dot camera projector, the whole works. Um, but you know what we're missing, right? Wow, wow. No students. Miss you all, guys. That's the part that hurts not getting to see your smiling faces every day. So let's get on with a lighter note. It's always nice to start the day with some cute fuzzies, like a little critter. Mama's, Mama's is our cat. She's a cutie pie, pretty kitty. Gets into everything. And then my favorite animal I saw on the internet this week, Uni dog. God, it totally looks photoshopped. So cute, but it was on CNN, so it's real, right? I guess. Such a cutie. That's one ear on the top. So talking about negative numbers, if we have troubles with negative numbers, there's a number of different strategies you can try to use to help you figure out um, the correct answers. So let's take a look at a couple of those. Um, counters is the simplest one. So, for example, it's usually better for smaller problems. If you had um, negative 7 plus um, 5 minus 4, something like that, all you really have to do is make little symbols or counters from all. Sometimes they circle them. It's just quicker to go... So I gotta make seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I have five positives. One, two, three, four, five. And I got four more negatives. One, two, three, four. And what you do is you group, you pair them. A negative. 
negative with a positive because a plus one and a minus one equals a zero. Those are called zero pairs. So that means those all are gone. They disappear. Bye-bye. Okay? And then what do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. So our answer is negative six. Okay? So that's one way you can work with uh, counters. I call it cheating, uh, basically. Uh, but another thing you can do is work with a number line. Okay? So instead of doing counters, you could actually see where things would be on the number line. So I'll do two quick little samples. If we did 1 minus 4, okay? So I have to label my number line here. I'll put this as 0. That means this is going to be 1. So I'm starting at 1, which is right here, okay? And then they're asking me to go negative 4 from there, or negative is to the left, going that way. So I'm going to bunny hop four spots, one, two, three, four, okay? Where you end up is your answer. Now let's count over and see what that ends up being. I'm going from zero to negative one, negative two, negative three. So that's my answer. Okay, another one that people get confused with is if they have a negative 2 minus 3, okay? How do you subtract from a negative? Well, it's the same thing. We're going to start with the first number. That's where we're going to start. So I'm just going to make negative 2 right here on my number line. And then from there, it's telling me to go minus 3. Three, which again is to the left. So I'm going to bunny hop three spots that direction. One, two, three. Okay, where did I end up? That's going to be my answer. So I'm going to count my way over. Negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five is my answer. Okay, simple enough. All right, let's move on to the next strategy. There's a rule. And I love this rule. It's the easiest one. Same sign rule. You technically already knew this long ago. Um, but basically, if you had 2 plus 3, you know that equals 5. How do you know it's positive 5? Well, because it's a positive 2 plus a positive 3. Oh, so what you're saying is if they both have the same sign, they're both positive, then their answer also has to be positive. Well, yes, it's the same thing with negatives. If I had negative 2 minus 3, or even if they said plus negative 3, however you want to do it, it actually equals the same thing. I'm really, I'm, I'm starting with 2 negative, and I'm going more negative. So the same sign rule says if you have the same signs, you just add them, 5, and keep the same sign. They both have a negative, so the answer is going to be negative. Okay? All right. The one that sometimes gets tricky for people is different sign rule. On the different sign rule, you have a positive and a negative. So let's go 2 minus Three. What do you do? The different sign rule says you subtract the smaller from the bigger. Let me rewrite that, okay? So 3 as a digit is bigger than 2. So 3 minus 2, okay? 3 minus 2 is 1. But you keep the sign of the bigger digit. So since 3 is bigger, its sign is going to win... So the answer has to be negative 1, okay? Let's do another one. Let's do a couple examples here. If I did negative 7 plus 3, okay, so this time the negative came first. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing, <clears throat> different sign rule. So I am going to do the bigger digit, 7, minus the smaller digit, and I get 4. But then you have to say the bigger digit, their symbol wins, because you have more negatives than positives. So the 
because you have more negatives. Your answer has to but also be negative, okay? So that's how the different sign rule works. Next, a lot of times, for adults especially, we can understand positive and negative numbers easier thinking about money. Now, let's look at an example of that. Any positive number is money you own. It's your money. Any negative number is money you owe. Like you're going to buy something or somebody's going to take that money from you. Okay? So let's say you're going to buy a shirt and some shoes. Okay? So those are negative, let's say, $10 and negative $20, okay? So the same sign rule says that I can add those and keep the same sign. So that's going to be $30 negative to you because you're going to buy it. So you're going to lose that money. And you have uh, $45. So... What are you going to have left? So then you're going to take your money you have, which is positive. It's going to be 45 minus 30. So when it's done and you bought your shirt and shoes, you're going to have $15 left. Okay, so some people like to think of money. Um, I was trying to get something more physical for people to see and visualize. So uh, a few years ago, I came up with hill or a hole. Okay, and this may have never happened to you, but you can maybe picture this situation. Okay, so let's say we're going to have um, 3 minus 10. All right, so with hill or hole, any positive number is above ground. Okay, so I'm basically, here's the ground, and I have a hill that's 3 feet. Okay. And somebody wants to buy a bunch of dirt for whatever project they're doing um, to landscape or something somewhere. And they're like, oh, I have three feet of dirt in my backyard. And they're like, oh, I need more than that. I need 10 feet of dirt. Well, that's more than you have. So they're going to take your three feet and they're also going to take more than that. How much more? Well, the grand total has to be 10. That's how much they want. They want 10 feet. And so a lot of people can kind of visualize uh, that what they're missing then is the 7 feet. But because they didn't have that dirt above ground, they had to dig down. So there's going to be negative 7 left on that when in the world of hill or hole. Okay? You have three feet of dirt. They need ten, so they take your three and they dig down another seven. So you've got a seven-foot hole, which is negative seven. Okay, that doesn't help everybody. The, there's one more strategy left that helps the most people, I think, And in the four years I've been doing this. The key is here for you to pick the strategy that works best for you. I always just had to remember the rules. Same sign different sign, okay? Um, but there's a lot of things that can help you visualize it and see it better, okay? The last strategy I was using was negative people. And I would jokingly say to people, um, you're going to lunch. And at the lunch table, there's negative seven people. I'm sorry, there's seven negative people is what I'm trying to say. So you and your friends, there's three of you, and you're all positive. So if you sit at that table, is it going to be a positive table or a negative table? And people say, oh, no, it's going to be more negative because there's not enough of us positive. How much more negative is it going to be? And people could kind of see and visualize, oh, well, there's going to be four extra negative people, okay? 
So that's a silly visual, but it helped some students. Um, and when I talked in class, I heard a number of students talk back to me that way on their own. They picked up on that and liked that. Okay, let's move on. So now we're just going to do some problems as practice. Uh, let me switch to red. Okay. So for my students, I assigned the even numbers. I'm going to do a couple of the odd numbers of each of these groups just to show you some examples. Whichever strategy you want to use. But for number nine, I have a negative and a positive. So I can already tell. Do you got more positive or more negative? My answer is going to have to be positive. There's more positive. 14. I'm going to go to a different sign rule and go 14 minus 8 equals 6. Which symbol uh, or which digit is the bigger digit? 14. So I have to use its symbol. It's the winner. So my answer is going to be plus 6 or just, you know, we don't normally put uh, a plus sign in front of it. We know that it's positive. Okay. Uh, let's look at number 11. 5 plus a negative 21. Can I just tell you, I tell my students, everybody does this. Um, is that um, subtracting or adding and gets confused seeing both symbols? Guys, this is the same exact thing as this, okay? I don't know, personally for me, the way I was taught as a kid, what's the point of saying adding a negative? Um, something's either positive or negative, one way or the other, okay? If they're in the same problem, then they're obviously um, clashing together and there's going to be a winner and a loser. There's more negatives here, so we're going to have more negatives in the end. So this would be different sign rule. So I would go 21, the bigger digit, and then I would subtract the 5. When I'm done, I would get, have to borrow there, one left. That's going to be 16. But 21 is the bigger digit. It is negative. Therefore, my answer has to be negative. Okay, so negative 16. And the last one here, 0 minus 5. Whoa, that, some people might think that looks confusing. Okay, let's visualize it. Let's cheat. Let's make a number line. If this is 0, what's happening? They're subtracting 5. You're going to bunny hop 5 this way. Okay, so you're going to end up at negative 5. Okay, that's that. All right, let's move on. Now, we are going to let's switch to red. Now we're going to, instead of starting um, on all of these ones but one, they're starting with a negative number. I honestly think that's a typo for number 14. I think that was supposed to be a negative um, 5 plus whatever. Anyway, uh, my students that are doing the evens, you can just answer it as it is. It's their mistake. So just do the problem they gave you. All right, so here I have two negatives. Same sign rule. So negative 5 and a negative 4. I'm just going to add them together technically. So I'm going from one negative to more negative. So same sign rule says add them together and keep the same sign. Okay? And the next one, add them the same sign rule. Add them together, keep the same sign, negative. The next one, both negatives, add them together, keep the same sign. All right? And the last one's a little tricky because it's three numbers. Whoa, scary stuff. So it's three numbers with the same sign. I will say one little strategy I always do is I make ten pairs if I see them. I would add these first and say, okay, I'm at negative ten minus five still. And then it's negative fifteen. You're going to get the same answer either way. Negative nine minus six is negative fifteen. Okay. All right. The next batch, the next batch of numbers here, we have some something a little different, okay? Now, I still have some different sign rules. Here's an 8 and 11, okay? 
the 11 is the bigger digit. It's a negative 11. Apologize. So you different sign rules. You take the bigger digit and you subtract the smaller digit. 11 minus 8 is 3. The bigger digit, they win, so their symbol is going to be in the answer. I have more negatives than positives, right? Okay. Um, look at number 9. Okay. This is one I've told my students um, about. This may confuse some people. Zero minus a negative five. How do you minus a negative? Okay. So I compare that to in English when they have a double negative. Like if I said, don't not do your homework. Do I want you to not do your homework? No, I'm saying don't not do it. I really want you to do it. The two negatives cancel each other out. Um, plus... If you look at it, it looks kind of like a giant plus sign. Okay? And you can see another one down here on number 13. So that's why I tell my students when you see that uh, they're subtracting a negative or doing the opposite of minus, however you want to read that, that means you're going to add them. Okay? So now people thought that was going to be negative 5. 0 plus 5, your answer is just going to be 5. And here, instead of 19 minus 19, it's minus the opposite, it's the opposite of minus 19, it's plus 19, so your answer is 38, and I can bet you a lot of people would miss that, 15 minus 1, oh my gosh, that's, a, oh my gosh, that's so hard, all right, so my students are supposed to do the evens on all these, all right, the next thing we're going to look at is multiplication and division, let me switch to my brown color here, um, Dorito Man was something, uh, a co-worker of mine in Harlingen had introduced to our math team. She found it online somewhere. And students I've had in every class since just love it. It's so easy. And before it was called Dorito Man, it was probably just the triangle. So somebody discovered that long ago and somebody said, oh, hey, let's just, uh, you know, pretend it's a Dorito, whatever, okay, let me make sure we can still see his eyes here, those are his eyes, and that's his mouth, okay, now, the story with Dorito Man, though, before I show you how it works, you gotta remember, it's only, see how it's all caps, for multiplication and division, so one of the ways I try to remember that, because some people try to use Dorito Man sometimes for addition and subtraction, they get confused, I call him the king of multiplication or division, and division. So I give him a crown with the times and divide symbol stacked together, or the queen of multiplication and division. Let's do that. Either way you want to do it, boys and girls, okay? All right, so here's how Dorito Man works. He's the king of multiplication and division, and in my classes, I even made like a little cliff here. We're going Lion King, right? And here's all his peeps down here, worshiping him, the new king or queen of multiplication and division. That way we remember it's not plus or, or minus. So as an example, if I had two times negative three, okay, the way you use Dorito Man, I'm going to switch colors here so you can see this. The first number is a positive. So I cover up the positive with my finger. The second number is a negative, so I cover up a negative with another finger. What is left? That's what my answer has to be. My answer has to be negative. So 2 times 3 is 6, and it's going to be a negative 6. So anytime you're multiplying or dividing with a negative number in there, use Dorito Man and figure out your answer first if it's going to be negative or positive. I always do the symbol first. So, because a lot of times after you do all the math, you forget about the, the negative. All right, let's do a couple as an example here. Uh, my students will be doing the even problems. I'll do a few of the odd problems. Negative 1 times a positive 9. Well, according to Dorito Man, I have a negative 1 and a positive 9. So my answer is going to be a negative. 9 times 1 is 9, okay? Number 7. 
and you don't necessarily have to draw it out every time. I'm just doing it to illustrate. Negative 7 times negative 7. So I'm going to cover the negative and cover the negative. What's left is a positive. So the answer has to be a positive 49. All right. And one, there was one more I did. Let me see which one was it. Okay, number three. Um, I have a negative times a negative. It's going to be the same as the one we just did. Two negatives times each other equals a positive, okay? Negative times a negative is going to equal positive, so I'm going to have a positive 54. All right, nothing too tricky there as long as you use Dorito Man, okay? All right, let's look at division. Uh, a lot of people get confused. Oh, I left a whole page of room for that. Here's where some people get confused, all right? On division, um, fractions... scare some people, but there's nothing to be scared of. It's really a division problem. Okay? Oops. And that's why they call it a numerator and a denominator or a um, the thing that, uh, depending on how you write it, if you like, I'll just look, I need to show you an example. Let's look at number one, negative 14 divided by 2. Basically, all that's happening here, guys, is this is like a mini fraction. And the four, negative 14 goes on top and the 2 goes on bottom. They call that phylo. If I wanted to make this into a division house, the first number goes inside. The last number goes outside. Okay, or if you have a fraction already, let's say they gave it to us as a fraction, or we made it as a fraction, we call it Tebow. Top number goes inside, bottom number goes outside. So you know how to write it. Okay, mm -hmm. so on a fraction, you're just dividing the top number by the bottom number. Okay, uh -huh. so if that's like saying you had. Um, I don't want to get into that. Let's just do the problem. Okay, so first of all, number one, let's make Dorito Man. I have a negative 14 and a positive 2. So what do you suppose my answer is going to be? 14 divided by 2 is 7, and my answer is going to have to be negative. Okay? Let's look at number 9. 0 out of 100 is nothing. That's 0. Okay? Zero out of negative seven is still going to be zero. That's a trick question. So if you did, um, if you did Dorito Man on that, that's kind of a trick question because we never have a negative zero. Zero is neither negative or positive. You just write zero. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? Let's do another one. Let's look at mm, number two. I already did one on the other thing. I'm trying to remember which one I did. Okay, so number seven, we have a negative divided by a negative. negative anything divided by one equals itself. So I know my answer is going to be 11, but I have negatives here. So I have negative 11, cover negative. Negative one, cover the negative. And what I have left is a positive, so that's going to be a positive 11. I just leave it like that. All right. Um... There you go, guys. Oh, number five. That's the one I was trying to find. That's the one I did with my other video. So it's still uh, Dorito Man. Number five is a negative divided by negative. So negative divided by negative. My answer is going to be a positive. And then we don't usually write plus. We just know it's positive because there's no negative symbol. 45 divided by five is nine. Okay? Guys, that is it. There's nothing more. I hope that helps. Sincere best wishes to you and yours during this virus time. Um, stay positive. You can conquer these negatives. Mr. Douglas out. And I will mention that next time I will use an app where you can't see what I'm about to write. 
So I heard good things about this app. I tried it. This is how my past few days have been. I've been trying all these different apps. Ugh. All right. So tomorrow's will be even different. Have a great night, guys. God bless.